design purpose-built theaters rather than these ad hoc, ad hoc theaters. And the Egyptians were the first to have a structure for theater. It wasn't designed for theater, it was their temples where they had religious performances. The Greeks did the first purpose-built amphitheaters for the first written plays. In the Middle Ages, traveling actors performed from their wagons, performed passion plays in their wagons until the advent of the Elizabethan theater and the Old Globe Theater being, being the most famous of that genre. In the, in the Renaissance, the Italians designed the first proscenium enclosed theater, which evolved to Baroque theaters with boxes for opera. So drama, music, dance, opera, concerts, all of these were performed in these spaces live, and I call all of that theater. And in the 20th century, film and television uh, started to invade on live performances, and more people were watching film and television than live performances. I believe that that may start to change. And, I'm sorry, and, the, and in the 21st century, sorry, we have the advent of uh, digital, digital uh, performances. And in the, in the, I believe that there may be some return to live, live theater. I was at the performance last night in Agora uh, here, and I couldn't help reminding myself of how, how much more dramatic and emotional it is to see a live performance rather than some recorded uh, performance. And the, the record industry is dying. There are, there's going to be more and more people going to, to live music performances, and in the future, you'll be able to take your, your uh, device and uh, after the performance, plug it in to a downloading machine and have a record of what you just heard, all for the price of admission of seeing, seeing that concert. And that can be extended to plays, musicals, uh, opera, dance, and, and, and orchestras. Why do I design theaters? My parents brought me to plays and concerts when I was a small child. I played the violin. And uh, in high school, I was an actor, but not a very good one, as you can see. And, 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 uh, and I didn't get the part of uh, Jacques. I played, the, I played the part of the banished duke. And, and uh, I w attended college uh, studying architecture. But by coincidence, I went to uh, the university that had the first degree granting drama program in the country, Carnegie Mellon uh, University. And, I, and my first wife, who is now deceased, was an actress from that school. And most of my friends were either producers or directors or actors from Carnegie Mellon. And after graduation, they, they asked me uh, if I would help them on their theater projects. So that's, that's how I got into it. And so how do, we, how do I design theaters? How do we design theaters? We, we, do, we use a participatory process. We involve the users, and that's how this, this building was designed. The, we use six principles in that participatory process. We ask them to, to not be judgmental of oneself or others. Sometimes great ideas come from what sound like really stupid, idea, stupid ideas. And we work with metaphors, analogies with nature, the arts, science, etc. We also look, take a look at the full spectrum of possibilities, leave no, leaving no stone unturned. We like to make inversions, turn things upside down, be devil's advocate. When Einstein saw the Michelson-Morley experiments at the end of the 19th century, trying to find out the, about the existence of ether or ether, he asked the question, well, what if there is no ether? What, does the, what do these experiments really mean? And that led directly to the th his theory of relativity. And then we, then we asked people to think synergistically rather than either or, 
try to find simultaneously, find simultaneous solutions to seemingly conflicting problems, and or rather than either, rather than either or. So we use this, this process with an all, all the theaters we've designed. And we use the participants, and it's the participants who are really designing the theater. They, they determine the linkages in the spaces, and, and they determine the program. So this is a cross-section of the theater, the main stage theater in this, in this building. And why do we have a ski slope roof, ski jump roof? Well, because we want a, as large a volume as possible for orchestra. The problem with most high school performance spaces are they're really auditoriums, they have low ceilings, and you don't get enough of a reverberation time. There's not enough volume. But we also don't want any overlapping sound waves, so the convex curve helps, helps uh, disperse the sound waves. All our buildings are functionally determined. Uh, we believe in form determinism based upon re reason, not, not arbitrary shapes. And the, w but we gave many choices to, to the users. We had, a, we had a flat roof with internal reflectors to prevent the overlapping sound waves. We had a straight roof, which doesn't diffuse as well. St a straight slope roof, we had this same convex curve going the opposite direction, and this is the curve that they is selected. This is a theater at Carnegie Mellon University, we did, which has quite a bit of flexibility. It has what are called tormentors that can open the proscenium width from all the way or close in for drama productions. It has rotating box boom walls. It has orchestra pit lift. It can, it can extend the stage or provide more seating. It has tension grid for flexible lighting uh, position. And the orchestra seating is actually removable. You could pull out this, you can create a three quarter round configuration with an extended stage and moving these seats can move here and over here. This is the La Jolla Playhouse. Uh, that has movable seating modules, and you can get end stage or proscenium, three-quarter round, in the round, or traverse configurations. Here it is in the end stage configuration. It also has a tension grid completely covering it for lighting flexibility, and these, and actually the tension grid f panels flip up so you can fly, fly between them. Here it is in the traverse mode, but you can also have the audience in the middle and the actors on the platform uh, surrounding the audience. So, so you can go from one extreme to the other, as was projected in Joseph Albers' uh, 19, 1925 uh, Universal Theater. This is the, and, and with these theaters, you f can further extend it by having orchestra show. This is at the Los Positos College up in, Livermore, and these, these theaters here at Las Virgins also have uh, orchestra shows. And this is an orchestra shell in use at Santa Barbara City College. This is the building you're in. Hope you recognize it. And this is uh, the building you're in with the tormentors pull, pulled in for, for drama production. This is called a tormentor. It can slide back and forth. And in addition to a tension grid like the other theaters, it also has a catwalk so students learn how to hang lights. This is the Calabasas Theater with the tormentor fully open that you would use for orchestra, ballet, uh, opera, uh, uh, musicals. The, wall, the, wig, the walls wiggle in order to prevent overlapping sound waves. And this is back to Agora, and we even have uh, roll drops at the cross aisle so that when it's a more intimate drama production, uh, the, you, your sense of space has been, has been uh, confined. But it's, still, it's transparent, so people in the control booth can still see the, the stage. Just an, a larger theater we've done with, or with this, uh, with a tension grid and uh, follow spot moves and, and a balcony and, si and side balconies. Our, our main objective is to provide a venue that where the audience can enjoy the magic of theater 
and we're writers, directors, uh, performers, designers, and technicians can get full, creative, flexible creativity for the learning enjoyment of the audience. Thank you.